Hello, my name is Steve Cooper from Energy IQ, and this presentation is called A Practical Implementation of What is a Well. This was first presented at the PPDM Annual General Meeting in Kananaskis in November of 2013. It's clear that the North American oil and gas industry is undergoing a step change at this time. As recently as 10 years ago, it was difficult to imagine that the U.S. would be approaching energy independence. But we find ourselves in a position today where North America is leading the global growth in oil, and oil production and is expected to continue along this path for the next decade. It's also expected that the U.S. will become a net exporter of gas by the end of the year 2015 and it could even be a net exporter of oil by the end of 2020. This rapid change has been driven by tremendous technical advances in the development of unconventional plays from both a drilling and a completions perspective. Tremendous number of wells are being drilled as can be seen in the diagram where we're really at the beginning of a rapid increase in terms of the number of wells that are going to be drilled. If in this case we're looking at the back end, but this also extends beyond multiple other plays as well, including the Eagle Fit and the Marcellus. As noted, drilling and completion complexity is increasing rapidly and is expected to continue to do so. And at the same time, the well life cycle to production is being compressed Companies are under more and more pressure to drill more wells, to drill them more quickly, to reduce town, downtime and, and to increase production at more efficient rates. This pace of change is only going to increase. And the key to success for companies operating in these unconventional plays is operational efficiency. To achieve operational efficiency requires easy access to integrated data across the full well life cycle. This in turn depends upon the ability to uniquely identify and relate the components of a well at an enterprise level so that information can be shared easily between divisions, departments and individuals. This presentation is going to focus on enterprise well identification through the practical implementation of PPDM standards. The PPDM standards in question are the well identification and what is a well. These standards are being adopted across industry at this time, but it's clear that the real value of the standards is only going to come into play when they're actually practically implemented. So the challenge we face from a data management perspective is that companies are generating and integrating data at all phases of the well life cycle. This information comes from internal sources, from partner and commercial sources, and also from public sources such as the states. This data exists at different levels of the well component hierarchy. And it really depends upon the source and the intended use of the data. So if we look back at the what is a well definitions, the components that we really care about are going to be well origin, typically referred to as well, well bore, well bore segment, and then completions that hang off either a well bore or a well bore segment. It's clear that different business units within a company operate at different levels of the well hierarchy. So the landman may be primarily involved in the well in the early phases of the life cycle, whereas the reserves engineers are going to be looking at well bores, bottom hole locations, and target formations. As we move into drilling and completion, then perforations within completions become critical. And then finally, if we look at production accounting, we can be concerned with all levels of the well hierarchy depending upon the state where we're reporting the data and how the company wants to consume that information internally. Over the past few years, Energy IQ has been involved in several projects 
to define approaches for identifying wells and well components uniquely across the enterprise and also for relating those well components back to each other. The other key driver for much of our work over the last uh, 18 months in particular is presenting the data that the way, in the way that the business expects to use it. If we deal with well identification first, we interviewed 10 different companies to see how they uniquely identify a well and the components of a well. The responses we received ranged across the full spectrum of possibilities. From the case where each well and well component received a unique identifier with no intelligence in any of them and no ability to relate components together through the identifier. In this scenario, the well XREF table becomes critical because it's the only way the components can be related together. The other end of the spectrum involve companies that essentially identified the components of the well within the well identifier. So the well identifier would be made up of the well origin, the well bore, the well completion, and possibly even further levels of granularity. The challenge with this approach is essentially that you've rebuilt the API number, and anytime changes have to be made to that identifier, they have to ripple through the model and this brings a lot of associated headaches with it. The solution that we finally settled upon was to put in place an eight-digit unique well identifier together with a three-digit component extension. This provides us the best of both worlds. The identifier itself can be considered entirely unique with no intelligence in it. So it's just a sequential number. But by appending the identifier with the three-digit component extension, we're able to relate components back to the well origin in the event that there's confusion or in the event that the database administrators need to pull all of that information out of the database directly. This approach gives us great flexibility because we can add additional well level types down the road and we can change the order or change the relationship between components simply by modifying the well XREF table and not having to cascade deletes and inserts throughout the data model itself. With this approach, the original identifiers are maintained within the PPDM well alias table and relationships are maintained within the well XREF table. If we take a look at an example of this, this is a real world example that came from one of Energy IQ's clients that have imp implemented this approach. In this case, we see that the well is identified by an eight digit sequential number with no intelligence to it. Then we have a single well bore that's drilled as a lateral, but the well bore is made up of three well bore segments. So we identify the well bore uniquely as going from the surface to the bottom hole of the final segment, and it gets the 000, zero, zero extension. Each well bore segment then gets the next well component number in sequence. It's important, however, to understand that the order of the three digit extensions is entirely random, and no intelligence can be built into that. What has to happen is that the well XREF table maintains the relationships and that's what gets interpreted when looking at the data. In this case, we see that the parent of the well bore segments is actually the well bore and the parent of the well bore is the well, as you'd expect. If we take that same example where a complexity occurred, we can look at the flexibility of this approach. In this case, the second well bore segment uh, drilling commenced on this and problems occurred to where they had to sidetrack past the original hole. And it was a sidetrack that was ultimately completed. So in this case, we simply add another well bore, which becomes a 004, and the completion on this then becomes a 005. So we can easily handle the challenges that this problem uh, created. This approach is fully compliant with the PPDM well identification framework gu guidelines as defined through WISS, WISI, and WISR.
Now we've established unique identifiers for all of the components of the well, we can start to build out our well hierarchy. What this slide shows us is a typical example we may run across where we have multiple, uh, multiple piece, pieces of data from different sources and at different levels of the well, the well hierarchy. So in this case, the blue records are completion records the green records are well bore and the beige is a well. What we need to do is to display the best data in a way that's meaningful back to the business. Our approach is to use processes that we'll discuss to build out the correct tree. So in this case, we see that the six completion records can actually be merged together to provide the three final physical completion records. And each of these is, uh, creates two additional well bores and finally is rolled up to a single well. The process that we approach to build out this well hierarchy is called aggregation and blending. Aggregation is the process whereby we create a record at a higher level in the well hierarchy from one or more records at a lower level in the well hierarchy. So if we look at the example here, we can see that we have a state record completion that is aggregated to create a single well bore record with a source of state. However, we also see that further down, we have two completions from the IHS data source on a single well bore. And we aggregate these to create a single well bore. And then we have three completions from the corporate data repository on a single well bore. And so these in turn are aggregated to create a single well bore. So now we have four well bore records from different sources within our database. So the next step then is to blend this data together to create a single record at the same level in the well hierarchy from one or more records of different source values. So in this case, we've manufactured two well bore records from the state source and the IHS source uh, on the 00, zero well. And we also had two physical records at that level from corporate and well view. And so we blend the four together to create our single most trusted version of that well bore that gets presented back to the organization. And we do the same on the zero 01 well bore as well. So now we have two well bores. These well bores in turn would be aggregated and blended together to create the single well record. So what impact does this have on an end user application? If we take the current state, we get from IHS 14 digit API records. If we look at a list of these records, it's difficult to understand what we're looking at. All I know in this situation is 51 records satisfied my query. It's not clear on first glance how many completion records I have, how many well bore records I have, and how many well records I have, unless I can read API numbers very quickly. However, once we've applied the aggregation blending process to create a tree view, it becomes much more readily apparent what sort of information I'm looking at. In this case, we can see in the first scenario, we have one well with two well bores, each of which has a single completion. On the second well, we have a single well bore with dual completions. It's very easy to see this, and it's also very easy to represent this information graphically. Furthermore, once we have the uh, well hierarchy represented in a tree view, it gives us the foundation for an enterprise MDM solution. We can manage the unique identifiers at the various component levels and link them to identifiers from other systems at the correct level within the well hierarchy. So for example, if I receive a PropNum identifier from Ares, I can match it to the correct identifier within my corporate repository at the completion level if, if that's the correct level. In the same scenario, I can take an identifier from WellView, which could be at the well bore level, and tie it into the correct level of the well hierarchy. 
And with a complex production accounting system such as SAP, I have the opportunity to tie identifiers into multiple levels within the well hierarchy, depending upon the feature they represent within the original well goal. We have the ability to maintain all of this data within the PPDM well alias table. So in summary, there's a great deal of change underway in the North American oil and gas industry. And this is uh, a precursor to what will happen in the rest of the world. Operational efficiency is the key to success in a rapidly changing industry. Companies are under pressure to drill faster, to drill more efficiently, and to produce more from the wells that they drill. Effective data management is critical to success in this area. Systematic well identification is required for workflow support so that information can be right reliably passed between departments. And data must be presented in the way that the business can, can consume it to avoid mistakes in interpretation being made. The PPDM well identification and what is a well standards provide a great foundation to practically implementing these goals. This solution is presented examples from real world implementations that build upon the PPDM standards to establish enterprise master data management solutions. Thank you.